obsolete here from Mr. Obsolete's Vintage Homesteading. Today we're going to talk about chainsaws a little bit, the ones I use all the time. You know, we heat with wood like most homesteaders do. The chainsaw is important for firewood cutting, also for cutting down trees that are damaged from storms, trees with root rot and different things. So we'll read the mail today here. Let's see if I can read it. Because I can. Mr. Obsolete, why do you use nothing but vintage chainsaws on your homestead? Because I can. I have the skills, knowledge, and equipment to repair, rebuild, and restore. Plus, they're super reliable, easy to work on, unlike the new saws. Okay, since we use mostly McCullough's, this is a model 110, 1967. This was a saw that changed the whole industry. It was lightweight, powerful, long-lasting. Saws before that were quite a bit bigger and heavier. Bigger displacement, lower chain speed, and heavier. But the reason that I like these McCullough so much is through the lineage, these are all basically the same power head. Displacement slightly different in different ones. But the parts, like the crank bearings and seals and the clutches, all of the common parts you need over the years are all the same so that that's why even though they've been out of business since 1999 almost any parts available and they're still relatively inexpensive the other reason I like McCullough's is this little feature here this button here almost every McCullough has that it has an overriding oil pump so that if you're in the cutting where you need more oil on the bar, you can simply put more on there other than the automatic oiler and uh, speeds the saw up, makes the saw work a lot less, makes them last a lot longer. Bars last much, much longer. <clears throat> this is the most common saw I use. This is a Promac 610. Usually run a 20 to 24 inch bar. You can run up to a 28, but it works them a little bit hard. But you can see this one's all metal. This one was the start of the homeowner's plastic saws. The side cover's plastic, the gas tank's plastic, the air cutter plastic, handles plastic. But there again, it was a wave of the future. All new saws are plastic, including the crankcase on a lot of the cheap old junkers they make today. <clears throat> These old saws People say, oh, they're heavy, which are a little heavier than other saws for the same size. But all that means is that uh, you're a weenie and you need to toughen up because they're plenty strong. <laughs> These will last forever. And here's a Montgomery Ward's version of the same saw. There again, oil pump. And even the bars, the McCullough bars were made not by McCullough. But they were made by a different company, that, uh, Windsor. And Windsor doesn't make anything but super high-end commercial bars any longer. Now this one looks the same as the others. This one, a lot of times I run a 28-inch bar on it. It's got a 24 on it now. This is a Promax 650. It has the same displacement as the others. But it's a factory hot rod, it's got 30% more power, it's got more magnesium and it's lighter. It's a nice powerful saw. I use these little mini Max a lot too. I'll do a separate video on those, but even the least expensive saw and the smallest saw has an overriding oil pump. Nice original bar and chain. And then for their size, they're really powerful. If you have bought a new saw the same size, most of them aren't nearly as powerful. They're also finicky and require a lot of fiddling. This is a later model of the 110. It's a 1010. There again, you can run up to a 24 inch bar. It's 54 cc. But it's a nice handy size, powerful, reasonably light for its era has the overriding oiler button on it also. 
And if I need to get into bigger trees, you can see that the power heads basically the same, just the displacement, so the weight's virtually the same. This is a 28 inch bar, really nice saw, powerful. There again, overriding oiler button. So that's why I use McCullough's. The other thing, maintenance is real critical on them. That's why these last, the lane saw I use, using the same saw for 39 years. These other saws are basically backups. I just use them occasionally if a carburetor's got a problem or some little glitch. I just pick up another one and go out and get back to work. The nice thing is that all of these saws together, plus a bunch of spare parts, I have less money in them than one brand new chainsaw like a rancher from Husqvarna or something that's made out of plastic. And it's a throwaway saw, six to eight years, it's junk, no parts available. I can still get all the parts for these. Let's see if there's any more on my notes here. Yeah, there's one little quick note here. I use a special oil on these, and new saws run at 50 to 1 to meet emission standards and stuff. And it's very critical to use the right oil, but the oils in the modern saws are synthetic. They don't work good in the old saws, it actually can damage them. But I just did a cost comparison. I looked up if you bought the little 2.6 ounce bottles of oil for a gallon of fuel, one gallon's only $280. Now that's what I call a real bargain. Now the stuff I use, which is partial synthetic and mineral based, a gallon of that's about $40. And these old saws just love it, they run on it great, never have to decarbon them. The first saw I ever had, I've never had to take it apart to clean the carbon on it. So and I use another oil to Bardol, which isn't available anymore, <clears throat> but I bought a warehouse out of it, so I'm still using that up. Anyway, I'll get into more of that on another video. But just a little compendium of the chainsaws that we use here on the farm. So we'll see you on the next video.